Well, hey everyone, welcome back to another Outpost review. As you can see, the woodshed is full. Um, I managed to go over there the other day and get the last load uh, that I'm actually going to haul because you can see I've still got all of this left over and I don't have any room for it. So what my intentions are is to take it down in the hollow and unload it there. Uh, I'm going to build a couple of campsites down there and I'll get I'll get it split up, I'll get it stacked up, and then I'll get it get also covered up. Um, that way when we have company up here, if they want to camp out on a, two of the pads that I talked about building down there, then they will have some nice dry firewood for their campfires. Um, there's, there's still quite a bit left in here, so I've got quite a bit to bust up and stack up. But uh, anyway, I'm certainly glad that... Um, those trees were ready to come down and the be benefit that I got from it or the need that I had was to be able to collect firewood for this winter so I no longer really have to do that I do need to cut up some more hardwood to mix with it but you know if push came to shove I could burn this right here I just have to tend to it a little more often because it does burn quicker than regular hardwood uh, because this is box elder, but um, anyway, yeah, we got six rows uh, six feet high at least and Probably 14 foot long by the time it's crowns like this um, Stacked in that woodshed. That's a lot of firewood, but uh, Let's go up here to the garden, and I will show you what's happening. I've got beans popping out of the ground everywhere, so I'm really excited to see that. And like I had mentioned, I'm going to have to put some permanent poles on the back because the things that grow <clears throat> like on a vine um, that grow tall, I'm probably going to use um, this bottom one and possibly that top one and then alternate. Um, mix and match you know year after year but uh, I've got to mount those and then I'll have to use some that are temporary here on the front that way I can take it up and get in there and and plant and do different things but um, yeah the beans are well on their way I've got some cilantro right here I bought a few plants of cilantro they're doing really good I've got a couple of more down there but uh, I think that they're really liking their home up here they seem to have been staying green and I've got some new shoots coming out down in there. Then I've got some cucumbers right next to them. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plants left. Um, I had one, two, three, four of them die. So I'm going to get some and replant those. But these are basically looking uh, pretty healthy. And so I believe that they're going to make it. You know, we had that freeze here a while back and uh, some of the plants they didn't fare well when I covered them up but just like the cantaloupe they didn't make it so I'll probably try and replant those one more time but um, these are looking good and then down here my cabbage I've got some cabbage in here here's the other couple of cilantro plants that I've got and I've also got some uh, broccoli and cauliflower mixed in here and then up there at the top, these up here, they're, they're looking really good too. So I'm going to have to get my thing out and till this ground up a little bit. But these were the original ones that I planted. And then I added some down here on this second tier. So all of these are looking good. And then the pepper plants. A lot of these little bitty tiny plants that I had planted, what now? Three weeks ago, I guess it was. Um, they are still holding they're still green I did replace some that uh, are, which are these taller plants in here but they're staying and they're looking green so I believe these pepper plants are going to make it 
Uh, these are a little bit stunted, but uh, they will come out, I think. And then this onion patch down here is crazy. I've got lots of onions down here, and I still think, I may be wrong, but I still think these onions that are planted in these hills right here have done better than the ones that are planted that were planted on flat ground. But anyway, and then I also seen somewhere if you clip these stems, um, not only are they good to eat, but if you clip these stems, that the onion will grow bigger. So. I'm gonna check into that just a little bit more, but I'm really excited about all of these green onions that I've got going on right here. Um, Cause I really like, I not only like onion, but I like to cook with onion. I had a little section left in here and the only seeds that I had left was corn, which is the uh, golden sweet corn. So it doesn't grow real tall, but I went ahead and planted that in here um, because the only other thing that I intended on planting this year was potatoes, because I still have to do um, the raised beds. There's two more that I'm gonna do, but I didn't have really time to go ahead and build all of these raised beds before it got planting season. So that's the reason that I only did these three, and then that basically that flower garden over there, because next year I'll add some more over here on the other side. But, um, yeah, I did plant some corn here. I haven't seen it coming up yet. It's been in there probably about a week, but um, it'll be coming out pretty soon. So just stay tuned. We will check in on it from time to time. Well, hey guys, welcome back to the outpost. Um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to talk about, it's that time of the month again, time to mention the giveaways for the month of May and the winners for the month of April. So for the month of May, we have decided to give away a bush buddy on our review channel. You know, spring is here, summer is well on its way. People are gonna be getting outside, they're gonna be hiking, they're gonna be camping, they're gonna be having a good time. Or maybe if it's if it's just even pitching a tent in the backyard if you live in the city. But this bush buddy, I'll tell you what, it's really nice to have. You can actually hike in the national park with these um, where there's undesignated camping sites and actually use these. Otherwise, you have to camp where they actually have a fire ring. You can actually cook on top of it, heat up your water, do whatever you need to do. So we've given one of these away before, and we had some really good reviews on it. And so we decided we were going to give away another one for the month of May on our Outpost Review channel. And for the month of May on the Outpost channel, we are going to give away an Agawa Canyon Boreal 21 saw. I really like mine. I use it quite a bit. And to show this to you, if you've never seen one before, it's very slim. And it's really cool because it packages up to, or it pulls up to almost nothing. Uh, but what you do is you undo this right here, open it up, put this in there like so, push it forward, and it locks into place. And you've got yourself a nice 21 inch saw. Now they come in 15s, they also come in 24s. But I'll tell you what, it's really nice to have a small saw like this that folds up that you can actually just slide down into your backpack and be able to take it with you. The Bush Buddy, which comes with a nice little 
also a little grill that goes on top and or if you want to use fuel you can use the little dish that comes with it and it goes it all folds up to a nice little compact and it's got a little case for it right there so like I said for the month of May these are going to be the giveaways for the uh, review channel like I said for the bush buddy and for the outpost channel the Agawa Canyon Boreal 21 saw well guys I'm back home and I've got the computer on and it's all ready uh, we're going to turn around here and draw the winners for the month of April but what I, I have been doing recently is announcing on both channels uh, both winners sets of winners and I guess I realized I had failed to put it in on uh, the review channel on the first video in that month so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the comments from uh, the one on the outpost channel our first drawing will be for the review since I forgot that and then the second um, drawing that we have will be for the outpost channel so let's turn around and see who the winner is going to be for the 10 and a quarter inch lodge uh, skillet for the month of April so right here is the video what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this URL and I'm going to insert it right here and then we are going to get the comments from that video and then we're going to go down and we're going to start the raffle so it looks like Josephine Flat you are the winner for the month of April for the ten and a quarter inch skillet and so what we will do is we will just hit and pick another winner now this is going to be for the Dutch oven for the from the outpost channel looks like Pauline Leboy or yeah, LaVoy, I think so. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. You are the winner for the Dutch Oven for the Outpost Channel. So like I said, Josephine Flat and Pauline, I think it's LaVoy. Uh, congratulations to both of you ladies for being the winners for the Outpost Review and also the uh, Smoky Mountain Outpost Channel. Please contact us by Gmail only. Our Gmail account is SmokyMountainOutpost at gmail.com. Uh, don't Facebook, or Instagram, anything. Contact us by email. Let us know how to get these to you, and we'll get them out as soon as possible. So congratulations again to both of you. Let's get back to the video. Well, if you have been following the build on the uh, chicken house, the Coupe de Ville, the Cadillac of all chicken houses where all the chicks are going to want to hang out, I finished putting a lid on it the other day so got all the metal on and I still need to do a little bit of caulking up there basically what I did is I went through and I had all the scrap material that I had gathered with the exception of the long pieces um, and that ridge cap but I had a bunch of metal left over I built that little dormer all out of scrap I tried not to go and buy anything so I'm going to use some caulking up there to kind of finish that off instead of um, I didn't have any of that um, I can't think of what you call it that um, any more of that angle stuff left that it's not a valley but it's edging I guess is what you would call it I didn't have any more of that left so I used what I had and did the best that I could I'm gonna fix a couple of little troughs because of the way that that thing is angled water will come down and it may run sideways so I'm going to uh, put a couple of wings in there on the upper portion so when water does come down it'll be redirected into the valleys that come down out of those long sheets but like I said I tried not to buy anything I'm trying to use up all the scrap that I had around here but uh, yeah it's coming along really good uh, let me take you inside. It's a little bit dark, but I think you've probably seen it in other videos. But uh, I'll show you what I did inside. I've got actually 12 nesting boxes right here. Uh, three across and four high. Um, 
I don't know that they will use these top ones unless I put a cover on it because I think that they like to be in some place where it's cool and shaded. Um, but I did build 12 of these, so we'll just have to see. Got a little walkway here. It's six inches wide. I think it'll be wide enough for them. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see. If it's not, then I can make it a little bit wider. But I was trying to conserve space in here and kind of line things up where I could still get around in here and walk. And then I've got the roosts up here. I've actually got eight roosts up here. And I didn't take the bark off of these so that their feet would be able to cling to it a little bit better. Of course, I know that their feet are made to be able to cling to branches, but and I figured that they may do a little pecking on these anyway, so um, I decided to go ahead and leave the bark on it, and then I used a 2 by 8 up here, and they will be able to walk back and forth really easy on this. Of course, they may jump up and jump off, but um, anyway, I do have a place for them to roost. They're all on the same level up here, and so hopefully they won't try to develop a pecking order since they'll all be on the same level. And then of course this piece down here, this plywood that I put in so that at night when they use the bathroom I'll be able to open up those doors down there and clean that out. Um, if I need more nesting boxes I can put some behind the door back there. And then I don't know what I'm going to do with this area down here. Um, but, you know, there's still quite a bit of room in here for the chickens. There's room for me to get in and out of here really easy. I didn't want to have to access things from the outside, so I just made it large enough to where it would house all the chickens and the turkeys. Now, one thing I got to thinking about, I may have to make that entry and exit hole down there a little bit taller for uh, turkeys. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, but... Yeah, I'm excited about getting this finished, getting the pen built so that I can uh, get some chickens up here. And uh, we can film those too, because I, I like watching chickens. Another thing that I did... <clears throat> When I bought these, I bought eight of them because I knew it was going to pretty much take four per side. But instead of cutting uh, the last one, the one I went over there and cut because I needed 20 inches, um, the ribs weren't going to come out the same. So I just took this one and turned it around backwards. So I've got two of the same size here with the lip, but it's, you know, it's not hurting anything. Um, water will still run down here. Uh, the only thing is when you look at it from this angle right here, it looks different than the others uh, because it is backwards, but instead of wasting a whole sheet of metal, I just went ahead and used that other piece right there, turned it around backwards, and it worked just fine, and I put it on the back side um, where you can't really see it, and so I saved a uh, perfectly good piece of metal like this, that whole length right there by turning this around and you know it's a chicken house so it's not really going to make that much difference I don't think that they'll give me any lip service over it but uh, yeah chicken house has a lid well I'm gonna have to do a little cleanup around here because of all of the wood scraps that I've got left laying around everywhere from building the chicken house because the next item on my agenda of course is I'm gonna work a day in the cabin I'm actually going to purchase some insulation here in the next couple of days and get that room, um, one bedroom, insulated, get the roof insulated. Um, and what I'm going to try to do is I want to try to put some of that radiant barrier on top of the insulation. Or what I may do is I may go ahead and put it um, on the bottom side before I put my tongue and groove. But we'll, I'll have to figure out, you know, which way I'm going to do it, which way is going to work best. But I am going to, like I said, try to get those walls sealed up because I'm getting more and more stuff moved out here. And uh, if I can get that done, then I can go ahead and put the wall material on and put my tongue and groove at least in that one section and get moved in here. Um, but I think I've got five poles 
that I'm going to have to cut uh, to go. I'm going to build a pin here. It's about 15 by 15. They'll be able to get up underneath the chicken house too because I elevated it off the ground. Um, I will have to put around the bottom portion. I will have to enclose that, but they'll be able to get up underneath there. It'll be nice and cool during the day. And it'll come out here about 15 feet, and then of course it'll have a cover over the top of it. And it's primarily going to come in right underneath this window and right over the top of this door. Now I said that I may have to make this door a little bit larger, so I may have to cut it up into here. In that case, what I may do is come over to the window and then go up and over a little bit. But we'll just have to wait and see. Um, you know, some turkeys uh, are bigger than others, so like the game turkeys, you know, they're a little bit smaller than some of the ones that you raise. But uh, anyway, we'll have to see how that goes. But yeah, the, the pin is next that I'm going to have to build here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a handrail that will come out this way and go down towards the end. I'll have steps coming up on that side over there. So when I build the pin, uh, that material will come up about so high on the spindles. And like I said, it'll go along this way right here. So it's probably going to be about this high. And that'll give them, you know, plenty of space to um, come out and piddle around, you know, during the daytime. And like I said, go up in underneath. So they'll have a section probably, oh, maybe 25 to 30 feet long and uh, 14 foot in depth that they'll be able to use. And I'll leave that door open. They can come and go as they please, get in and out. And I won't have to, if I have to leave, you know, I won't have to be here to babysit them. I'll have some automatic feeders in there. Um, and I'm thinking about possibly on that back side back there putting at least one piece of guttering. I may even use some PVC to catch rain and come down into a barrel that will uh, water them all the time. It'll have an overflow in case it rains really heavy but then I won't have to worry about watering them. So yeah, um, as soon as I kind of get all these wood scraps cleaned up, I'll start digging some holes and we'll start uh, building the pen for the chicken house. Another project that I'm gonna work on is this earthen oven. I'm not going to start it and then complete it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just work on it a little at a time but this is another project that I want to work on that I don't think is going to take too long. But this right here is red clay um, that we have a whole lot of up here in Tennessee, red clay dirt. And I basically piled it up and left it here for the use of building this earthen oven. So all I'll have to do is mix some water with it and then it turns to basically red clay. Um, this earthen oven, the, the pedestal that I built, I'm not going to change it in any way. But what I've decided to do is to change these boards up here on the top. These boards right here are thick enough to be able to handle the weight of this earthen oven. <clears throat> well, what I think I'm going to do is mill these, uh, mill some more of them to where they come out about this far. And then I have decided to use some of that slab wood and put on the side all the way down to at least the porch level so that you don't see an up underneath here and see the wood box that I built on the inside. So it will have slab wood that will come down to at least here and will come up and be up underneath this right here. I think it will look a whole lot better. And uh, so I need, I'm going to use these possibly for the steps to the chicken house. So probably what I will do is I will mill these, like I said, longer. Then I'll begin to build me a box here. And then I'll probably start with sand, tamp that down in here, give me a good base to start with, and go right on up with this earthen oven. And I built this shed roof out over far enough that I thought it would cover it. But I still may have to build somewhat of a small doghouse over this, um, three-sided basically, to keep it protected from blowing rain that's at least coming this way. So, um, but this is one of the projects that I'm going to be working on from time to time. Uh, so I'm excited about getting this done where I can cook pizza and, and bake things and stuff like that. So, and then the other thing is this grill. 
yesterday I had cooked on this and kind of like today the winds blowing um, so what since the wind comes from this direction basically all the time uh, I had to stack these brick up because it was blowing the fire sideways and the heat's basically going in this direction. But by creating a box effect, I had a lot of heat coming upward instead of going sideways. So my neighbor, I had told him at one point, and I'm going to have to nail him down to it, um, what I want to do is I want to cut a piece of metal to go across the front here that would come up this high, put a couple of hinges and then some latches on each side that way when it's windy and then the back side I need to make up some mortar and go ahead and lay these brick back there permanent because if you remember it was all open underneath here uh, with the exception of the bottom brick back there but go ahead and make that permanent and then uh, get that door fixed and put it on hinges that way it will stay up all the time after I start the fire and then of course I can cook uh, but then if I needed more air, you know, I could always let the door down, but primarily let it down to be easy access to clean out all the ashes and things. So, so that's something that I'm going to have to do pretty soon because we've been having a lot of wind lately and it wants to make the fire go sideways instead of coming up. Uh, so it would just be a whole lot easier to uh, cook the meat, cook it evenly, and not have to constantly shift it around over the fire. So that will come in really handy. So this is the room that I'm actually going to use as my room right here. Got another one just like it, just basically opposite on the front that will be used as a spare bedroom. And I've got a bunch of my stuff packed in over there already. But um, And I still have yet on the two sections on the front that I actually put the radiant barrier on incorrectly. I've got to get that done correctly before I forget about it. Um, I guess I was thinking I was putting on wrap, house wrap instead of the barrier. But I gotta get that done. I basically got all the wiring done in here where I can, like I said, put that insulation up in here, put the wall material on. I've got to trim out this window and that one over there. And then up top here, uh, put the insulation and the radiant barrier in there, put it on up over here at the gable end, put that insulation in, put that wall material up, put my tongue and groove up top and then what I may go ahead and do is finish out of course I'll have to do this side of the walk-in closet but I may go ahead and finish that other side too that way the walk-in closet will be done because when I move all my clothes out here I'm going to have to have a place for those so I think I'm going to have to do this bedroom and that walk-in closet get that done because I can put my clothes in there and a lot of these boxes and I won't have to worry about it um, being in the way, have it done, I can pack it in there until I get the rest of the house done and then start moving things around, setting, house, setting up house. But um, that's the plans to get this thing closed in here where I can get moved in. So guys, I'm going to go ahead and shut this video down here. Thank you so much for all of your support and don't forget about our giveaways. Um, make sure and comment on those on the first of the month so that you get yourself entered for the giveaways and those new milestone giveaways that we talked about. We're excited about uh, you all being uh, a continued part of the growth of our channel. We thank you so much. We hope that you have a great afternoon. Take care and we look forward to seeing you back up here at the cabin again next time. Mm -hmm.